Now, if you're considering going into 3D printing, I want to share with you the number one accessory that is overlooked. This is the mistake that most who are new to 3D printing always make. That is not getting a filament dryer. Filament dryers are going to really transform and improve your experience with 3D printing because they're going to help really prevent clogging, jams, all the bad prints that you see on many of social media can be resolved if you have the right filament dryer and dry filament. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at a new product from Creality. This is the Creality Pi X4. It's a fantastic filament dryer. And what I love about this device is that not only can it handle one spool, but can handle four at the same time. And it has two separate heat zones so that you can have those filaments dry or that filament that requires a lot of heat. It can stay in one area and then those that require normal heat in another. So let's get right to it. Now, as I mentioned, this is one of the biggest areas that I see as misses when it comes to 3D printing. And it's not just those of you who are going into 3D printing, but sometimes even us experienced people find ourselves that we may forget to have a good filament dryer. And this filament dryer from Creality is one of the best filament dryers that we've seen in a very long time. It actually has the ability to uh, dry four, four spools at the same time. And one of the things that I really like about it is that it has a dual independent heating chamber. So basically what you have is two chambers separated that are going to be able to heat uh, up to four spools at the same time. Two that can be regulated to the same temperature and two at a different temperature. So let's say, for example, you're looking to use PETG. You want to be, go through a drying cycle. You would put that on one side. And if you had two rolls, they would be there. And if you have another that is, let's say, PLA, you could put it in the PLA side and you'd be able to have that at a separate temperature. You're able to control the temperature separately. And what's cool about the solution is that not only are you able to run two different temperatures for different filament types, but you can actually keep the spools in that filament dryer and use them with any Creality uh, printer or any other brand for that matter. Even though this is a Creality dryer, it will work with any printer as well. This printer, as you'll see in a couple seconds, also has two different areas that you can uh, basically connect your filament through. So it has a top area and a back area that you'll see in a couple seconds. It also has active dehumidi dehumidifiers, right? And basically what it's going to do is it's, again, going to really, really work with maintaining the moisture levels really down in your filament. It does have a desiccant uh, area. And the cool thing about it is because it's in the area that is in the heat path, it means that it's constantly recharging and regenerating. What typically happens with this desiccant, which absorbs moisture, is that over time, it gets so charged with moisture that it loses its efficiency. Because this is constantly uh, heating itself, it is actually going to be always regenerated in an optimal, I would say, performance. It also has active dehumidification, which means that it's going to, again, keep that filament ready for your use. The desiccant and the desiccant is a material that basically absorbs the moisture, is constantly being regenerated because as that desiccant absorbs the moisture, the heat that's being generated by the dryer is going to, again, uh, dissipate that humidity and then regenerate your desiccant. That's also really important. Uh, it's quiet, which I really like, and it also has lights that indicate when it's running, not only in the display, but also inside of the dryer itself, which is something that inspires confidence because you know that it's running. So let's take a closer look at this uh, specific dryer. And one of the things I just wanted to highlight is that it's not going to lock you into only Creality products. If you have other brands, this is going to be a great dryer for you. Matter of fact, it, this looks so much like a CFS or an AMS, depending on the line of printers that you're working on, that this is a great complement for any printer. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now, the Creality Space Pi X4, when you see this, it's going to look very much like the CFS solution that comes with the, again, King 2 Plus. The challenge that I see, as I mentioned in the intro with these uh, filament dryers, is that most people overlook this as one of the basic must-have solutions when you get into 3D printing. Most of the failures, as I mentioned, when it comes to filament, uh, comes from the fact that the filament um, is not dry, and there's no way to actually dry it because you never purchased the filament dryer to begin with. So what we're gonna do is you'll see me uh, taking things out of this box so we can show you the actual product. I'm gonna tilt it right here in the side so you can see. So pretty much everything is really nicely packed up and we'll go ahead and pull this out. Uh, we'll put this over to the side. 
But Creality has really done a great job over the years improving the overall packaging of their products. So um, really like the fact that everything is well protected. Um, knock on wood, I really haven't had any problems with any product that I received from them, uh, even as it comes overseas. And they have a very easy way, um, let me move this off here for a second, to actually take things out of the box. So literally, I was holding on to this top portion right here, and it came out with ease. So as you can see, that filament dryer looks like the CFS. It looks so much like it. It's a really simple unboxing because all you have is a cord that's in a box. We'll toss that over to the side. And then here you have uh, your filament dryer, right? And the nice thing about this is that you can, in addition to drying filament, you can actually use it at the same time. And there is filament that due to its the, the, the fact that it basically can absorb so much water that you'll want to maintain it in this unit even as it's printing. And what you see in a second here is that there are multiple ways to use this dryer in your setup. I've seen this where a single spool is being used to serve maybe multiple machines. So literally you can have one, two, three, four different machines getting filament, or you can have one machine that's getting filament. For that matter, you can pair this with the K2 Plus on the side, and maybe you have some filament in here that it could be, uh, let's say for example, uh, carbon fiber filament, some filament that you need to make sure, or some PETG that you're working with, just something that you're really looking to keep dry, you'd be able to use uh, this for it and still use it while it's printing. Now, let's go ahead and open this up. We gotta see if it's left or right. All right, looks like it's that way. And we'll go ahead and open up these sides and we'll take a look at all the different components that we have going on here. But you'll notice you have two bays each one of these bays, as we mentioned, is going to be independently heated. So you can have one temperature here and one temperature here. Uh, as you saw in uh, the actual intro, the heating chamber itself, it's almost like if it was an oven, very similar to an oven, where the heat goes around it, which is really important because you don't want one side of the filament to be dry and the other one not. So it has that kind of... Uh, motion where as it's heating, it's going to cover everything really nicely. Now, I haven't plugged it in yet, so you'll see what, how nice this looks in a couple seconds. But at the very top, you notice these uh, four points that you see here. Well, they're actually for your filament, right? These are all areas that can serve output from this specific device to go into the printer that you're working with. So I like the fact that you have this from the very top. And this is all going to be based on where you have your printer, right? We'll go ahead and plug this back in to keep this nice uh, and plugged. And all it does is it just goes in just like that. But then also in the back here, what you have is another option. And, and again, I thought that this was pretty thoughtful in the way they did this. So you also have in the back four of the same plugs. So you have two on the top and two in the back, depending on where you're going to mount this. So for example, if I have this high up, I may feed from the back. If I have this, uh, let's say like on this, on a surface like this, and I have my printers on the side, I may get it from the top. Or if I have this on the floor, I may be feeding upwards. So you have a lot of different options. And then you see here that you have your, your basically your power switch uh, that allows you just to plug in. Uh, you'll notice that on each side, you do have a fan that uh, could serve uh, any kind of exhaust that you need. Uh, but it also doesn't allow any moisture in, so it's very, very well balanced. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in right here, and we're going to see this turn on. I'm turn this around, and I'm going to connect it to a power supply right here, and then we'll see how well this guy looks. All right, so we have it plugged in. Let's go ahead and power it up and see light up. So here we see everything going on here. And this is really nice, a very, very nice crisp display. Let's go ahead and go through the setup process. So English, and then hit OK. Welcome to the Space PI. That's it. This is what we're talking about. Now, you have the temperature that you have going on inside. You can see it on each side. We'll go ahead and go through the setup just so you can see what's going on here. You can do auto mute uh, uh, lighting while drying, on or off. Ending beep. Again, you can turn that on. Screen off. Time delay right there. You have your brightness, your units, if you want to have Fahrenheit or Celsius, language, um, the manual, reset to default, 
and then you have an about and we can see on the about here it's giving you information about the firmware version uh, which is also really nice so we're going to go back back and then what we'll do is click on this little android guy here and then here what you could do is you can set the individual uh, filament that you want to work with so you have again three right here that you have so you can set up your drying right and you can modify these and then hit uh, that button right there so if I go here you notice here it says select the chamber that I'd like to apply it and then I hit start right so you can have these like presets that uh, give you that we'll go here to auto and you can set auto drying right and you can turn that on if you like and you have auto dehum uh, de dehumidifier so you can uh, take out uh, some moisture as well there so pretty straightforward so let's go ahead and turn this on and see how it works now I loaded up some filament I just want to show you <laughs> this is kind of geeky but this is where I put my filament that requires um, a stable environment I'll probably put some desiccant here and then I'll throw it in matter of fact what I had here was this so this is some Creality uh, this is Creality Hyper PLA CF Black and what I had it is in that container making sure that it was you know, as moisture, uh, in a moisture controlled environment as I could, given that that's sealed. I was curious because I saw how wide this is and I was so hopeful that I could put one of these big boys in here. And I said, maybe I can. And because it definitely has the width, but unfortunately it will not support a large spool of filament like this. Uh, as you see, as I put this in right here, it kind of uh, gets stuck in this area right here. It doesn't, won't really support it. So unfortunately, even though you have this, which is double wide, and you would think that it would potentially support one of the larger spools of filament, it's not able to do so. Uh, so three kg uh, spools are not gonna work, but you're gonna be able to have uh, the four of these other spools. And again, I can have two different temperature settings, one on each side. Now, if I close this, for example, I just wanted to show you something else um, in the actual settings that you have here. So you do have some, some good early settings. Let's make sure that's in focus. Basically, you notice that you have right here, uh, you have your PLA, PETG, and TPU. And what it's telling you is that that is going to require a specific temperature, right? And you can see each one of these. So you have 50, 65, and then you have 60. And then if you're going to be doing, again, that PET, uh, you know, even PA and some of the other types, you could do it at 80 C. And then you're looking at what the temperature or the uh, actual time is. So if we go here and you notice I went ahead and that one right there, if I go to this guide, uh, this is going to probably be an 80 C. Uh, version so I would choose ADC I would choose what side I'm going to have it and I would hit start and please confirm that the filament spool heat resistance is 70 C because you don't want to move uh, you know uh, I would say melt it because some of us have printed our own spools but there's some high resistance spools now you notice that there's a light in here so this guy's going to start it's telling me what my humidity is right or moisture levels and you can see that right there right and it's gonna run now on this side I could do the same thing I could go into the settings here and I can say hey you know what I'm gonna be doing PLA on this side so I'm gonna say drying I'm gonna choose this one hit start and it's gonna do the same thing so as soon as it powers up the light is gonna turn on now keep in mind you can have that light on or off I kinda of like it on because it tells me that it's actually drying so that's something that I'll leave configured that way and then besides that you're set to go now you could use PTFE tubes here if you like uh, for guidance if you want and it does have that little uh, I would say pressure um, gasket as well as sealer right here so that as you put it in it kind of locks into place or you can just keep it covered and then just dry the filament remove the humidity without having to remove it and you can see how it's doing steel so this is going to run for the amount of time program and then you're pretty set to go there isn't much to this solution except that. But again, this is the number one overlooked accessory when it comes to 3D printing. And one of the reasons many people who have failures when printing really don't realize that it's because their filament itself is not dry. And that, even if it comes in a little baggie like this, you should never trust the bag. Never trust the bag because you never know what happened before it went into the bag. And if it had moisture when it went in, it's going to have moisture when it comes out. Now, as you take a look at what's going inside, uh, you do have a desiccant bag here. And so this is also gonna help with the actual moisture. The cool thing about this is since it's continually heating, 
uh, even when it's not heating and that desiccant uh, bag is helping, the actual unit itself is rejuvenating the desiccant bag. So that bag is always going to be current. So unlike other solutions where you basically have to uh, renew, refresh the desiccant bag by actually literally going, putting it through a heat cycle, as you're going through here, you don't have to worry about that. The other thing is that I could feel the hot air coming through here. So remember we said that this is kind of like a convection oven. So here the heat is coming up and it's blowing around. So it's coming through here and then it's uh, there's another exact shoot like this on this side. So it's doing that circular motion right there. But it's cool that you have that desiccant tray there and the fact that you have this, this uh, again, convection type uh, heating or drying of your filament. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.